let's build an org chart in Power Apps. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through how to use Dataverse to pull in your information from Azure AD into a Dataverse table. And then we're gonna show you the Power Query that kind of goes to get that in there, shape that all right. But then once you've done that, it turns out that model-driven apps using hierarchy security have a pretty just add it and it works type of thing. So we're gonna show you that. And then we'll quickly show you how that would also manifest itself over in a Canvas app, all right? So this is all Dataverse. And instead of me teaching it, well, I was on vacation all last week, right? I was sitting on a beach drinking a little frozen lemonade drink. It was very tasty. And so I didn't have time to make the video. So my good buddy Juan made the video. So we're gonna jump over to Juan showing us how to do that. I am gonna jump in a couple of places and interject some pieces. Also remember the whole reason that I had Juan do this is because Juan's got an upcoming model-driven class. Juan teaches a live training class on model-driven apps with Dataverse, where he goes into all this nerdy detail on how to do all this stuff. And so since he's the instructor of that, it made sense to be the instructor of this. So let's just jump over to Juan's desktop and take a look. Hello, my name is Juan Grijalba. So basically I put together a model driven app and I just threw the user's table. Out of the box, the user table has a field in which you can store a person's manager. Once you do that, you'll notice that automatically you get this little hierarchy on the left side and I'll show you how this works. But basically this allows you to view your org chart in a, in a graphical manner. You'll see that this displays the organizational chart of your company. It is fully dynamic as you can go up up a level, you can go sideways, depending on how, you know, how big your company is. So I can see that, for example, you know, Nicole is at the top, and then you have all the people that report down. For example, you can go down, and then you can, you know, you can go down one level, and then you can keep going up. So this is a fully dynamic organizational chart that's being built just by leveraging a simple model-driven app uh, view. So let me show you how this is put together. The first thing that you must know is that out of the box, Dataverse comes with a table called users. Inside this users table, there is a column called manager. You'll notice that this manager is actually a lookup table. And it's a lookup table that references the same table. So this, is, this creates a parent-child relationship, right? So this is a lookup table that's referencing the same user table, right? And this is the manager field. Once you do this, if I go over to my relationships, I'll notice that I probably have a one too many relationship to my users table. So I can come a related table and I can come in here and just search for user. And if I come and look at the relationships, there's probably one in here called manager. What enables the hierarchy that you saw earlier is that once you set up the relationship, you can set this relationship to be of the type hierarchical. This is what allows you know, the representation of the parent-child relationship to be displayed in the form that I show you guys. You can use this not only with the user table, but with other type of relationships that you can work with. For example, maybe a parent project to child projects in a custom table. I'm not going to show you all those details, but just by knowing this, the, this type of information that once you create a relationship to a record within the same table and set uh, the check mark to be hierarchical, then that allows for the uh, chart representation of field. So basically what, you know, what I did in here is I, you know, I built the solution and I called it my hierarchy. I basically built a simple model driven app, uh, basically just through the user table inside of it. And I'm leveraging the out of the box fields that come with the user, you know, the, the user form, the user view. So what, you, what you're seeing in here basically is, let me go back to the user, is the out of the box you know, views from the user table. And like I said, if for example, if I log in into any user, you'll notice that there's a field in here called manager, okay? So if you were to update this with your manually, you could do this manually with all the, you know, your, your company's uh, parent-child relationship between managers, then that will work. But what I also included in this solution, which you can download if you subscribe to the channel, or you subscribe to the training, I'll let Shane handle the details, but basically I have a solution and in this solution I built a data flow. And this data flow, it's basically bringing in the information from your Active Directory. So if you, if you have in your Active Directory your manager and who they report to, then you can build the data flow in order to integrate the data from Active Directory to the user table in Dataverse. Out of the box, that's not happening. So out of the box, uh, Active Directory integrates a lot of other details like the users that belong to your organization, their email, and other details. 
but the manager is not automatically being populated. So you can build a simple data flow in order to bring that data in. I'm going to go in here and then I'm just going to go and show you guys what I did to build this data flow. I'm not going to go step by step into all the details on how to build this data flow. But basically the first thing that I did is I obviously bring in all of my users from my Grab API. So basically all I'm doing is hitting the Grab API and I'm getting all the users. By default, the Grab API can only bring up to 999 users. So if you work for an organization that has more than 999 users, you actually have to find a way to, to look, you know, a token in order to get more than 999 records. In my case, I, don't, I have less employees than this, so I'm okay with living it at, in the top 999. You can, try, you can try out these calls by going to, you know, the Graph Exploder, right? And they, you know, that's how I figure this out. Once I, I bring in the information from my users into this data flow, basically that's, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step through, through a step. So basically I connect to the Grab API. I'm basically making this call. You will have to authenticate the first time. And this basically will bring in all the information, you know, that's, a, that's coming from the Grab API when you hit the users. The next step that I did in this data flow is I remove all the columns. And the only column that I'm really concerned with, with all my users, is the email column. Because the email column is actually a natural primary key, as everyone has a unique email address. And the next thing that I did in this data flow is I renamed the column. I just call it, you know, the user email. And then I changed the data type to be the type text. Data types are very important. The next thing is I need to be able now to bring in the managers for all my users by also making another API call to the Graph API. So there's another Grab API call in here in which you can get the manager of the person, right? And instead of me passing in the me, what I can do in here is I could probably, you know, type in here my email. Let me do that com. Uh, I, have to, I have to put the users. So basically this is how, you know, I will be able to, you know, by making this Grab API call, you know, graphmicrosoft.com forward slash users, and then I threw the email of the person and then manager. This will actually return the managers of that person by leveraging the Grab API. So now that, that I had this information, I, you know, I said, oh, well, what I can do now is I create a Power Query online or a Power Query function in order to loop through all my users and bring in their manager. So basically, if I go back to here, that's what I did. I went into this data flow and I actually built the same thing that I'm doing, right? I built a function within Power Query and all I pass in right here is the user email. Right, the same thing that you grab micro users, and then this is a variable, and then I'm getting the manager. So I build this function within Power Query, and then if I go back to the steps that I where I was, so I'm here, I have all my emails, then I'm invoking that custom function in the next step, and I'm basically passing all the emails from uh, from from the list that I got. This will return the manager of all these people. Basically, the next step is I just expanded the column, and the next thing that I that I got was the Azure Active Directory ID, right? So this is the the ID, the GUID. Every every time you create someone on your Active Directory, you get a GUID. So that's the next piece of information that I extracted from that from that query. That's all I care. Basically, then the next thing is I I remove the nulls. Nulls means that that person doesn't have a manager in Active Directory, so I don't care about updating those in Dataverse. And the last thing that I did was I basically, you know, turned the data type of this to be of the type text. Once I had, you know, the user email, and then I had the active, uh, up, you know, I had the ID of the uh, Azure Active Directory of the manager, with those two, two informations, I can update my user table by leveraging a data flow. So I can go and click Next. Obviously, I'm not loading the function. The next thing is I am, um, I'm mean, basically updating the system user table. I set up, an, I mean, I'm going to go after this, but I basically set up a natural key in the user table by, you know, by using the email address. And I'll show you guys how to do this in a second, but basically I'm passing two pieces of information. This will allow Dataflow to do an app, an app search. So basically it will, it, it will find an email in the user tables, it will find that record and it will update the manager's table by leveraging this natural key. So if I go and I look for the internal email right here, you'll notice that I'm just passing the user email. So this is how it finds the record. And the next thing that I'm passing over 
is to the parent system user ID. It expects the Azure Active Directory object ID, which I got from the API. And this is updating that manager column. Okay, and then I go ahead and I can publish this data flow. So this will basically go out there to Active Directory and it will update your table within the user's table with the information from Active Directory. I talked about the primary key. So what you basically have to do is you have to go to tables. You have to find your user table or system user right here. I went into keys and I created my, an additional key, right? And I, you can call this whatever you want. In my case, I call it natural key primary email. And I basically said the internal email, or, you know, they call this primary email or internal email. And I said that to be a, you know, a natural key. Natural key means that it has to be unique per record. You cannot have two people in that table that will have the same email. We know that's not the case because everyone has a unique email. Quick little note here. So when I was importing with Juan's solution, I was having a hard time with this key. It kept failing for me. And when I went and looked at my data, it turned out that I had two people with the same primary email address. They were external people. So we'd added the same external person twice, two different ways. So they were in there. And so that was causing this to fail. So if you have failures when you go to add this key, it most likely is duplicate primary emails. So I went, deleted the one bad user, and it all worked for me. Anyway, back to one. With all of these pieces of information, I was able to take the data from Active Directory, update my user's table in Dataverse in order to have you know updated information of managers. And I was able to quickly put together a model-driven app in which I'm leveraging the out-of-the-box user's table, everything out of the box, and then I'm able to visualize my hierarchy by using the hierarchical relationship within a model-driven app. All right, watching this part, I was a little confused. Juan oversimplified how simple it was. I see undersimplified, I don't know. But literally all he did was added the user's table to his model-driven app. So it was one of the tables added to the app. And then all of the things you saw here worked. Like he didn't do anything special to make any of this work. There was no steps in model-driven app, just add the user table. Now that this is configured, model-driven app just automatically sees it and he got this interface. Super cool. You can also leverage this relationship in a Canvas app. I'm not gonna go into the details of how this was built. Another, you know, you can also leverage, you know, Canvas app in order to visualize your organizational chart. So you'll notice in here that I have this. It works the same way. I can click, on, for example, Allison, and I can see who reports to Allison. I can keep going down one level. I can go up one level. I can keep going up one level. So it, it is pretty dynamic. All right, so I know Juan said he wasn't gonna explain. I mean, I can't explain a little bit. But so what he did to make this work in a Canvas app is in reality, this is just three different galleries. So you can see if I click here, this is a gallery we're filtering where the user's primary email is the current logged in user's email. And so then this gallery is the current user's manager. Why he did mana, we never understood, but he did. And then down here, this one is just filtering the users where the primary email equals the logged in user. So this is how Juan chose to, you know, kind of build this hierarchy chart. It's really just three galleries. And so I'm not gonna explain how to build it all now, right, remember the whole vacation thing, but what I decided was we'll make a version of this next week. We'll build a Canvas app. I hope we can make it look a little nicer and explain a little bit more about the mechanics of this, but it's really pretty cool, right? Like it's just those, and so, you know, if I click on Chewy, all it's doing is changing those variables to be, you know, him. And so then now you can see it's sorted out by Chewy. If I then click on Shane, right, that's me. If I click on my face, it goes back here. Now you see Nicole, we click on her face, and then we can now see all the people that are report to her, right? Cause she's the actual CEO here. Um, and then I think one of the things that we'll do in next weeks is we'll make it so that when there's no manager, right? So the system is her manager cause she's the top of our food chain. So we'll kind of hide that. And I think I also want to figure out, you know, like, so if we go into me again and then a Chewy and then Ferguson, so then down here you can see that Ferguson has no report. So that comes out pretty clean. So anyway, that's the canvas app, but it's really just about pulling in those data verse tables and then filtering out. So next week we'll build a org chart in Canvas apps, right? Using this data that Juan just got together for us, but we'll build the mechanics. Okay, all right, back to him. Uh, all, all of this solution is, is available to you guys if you subscribe to the training. You know, I'll let Shane handle all, those, all of those details, but you will be able to download the Canvas app, the uh, data flow, in order, in, in order for you guys to implement this in your organization. All right, and that's a wrap. So hopefully you enjoyed this, right? Like Juan was talking about. So sign up for his model-driven class, right? You spent a week talking about Dataverse and model-driven apps, solutions, data flows, all those craziness and like infinite more details live with Juan. It's a great way to learn. I know I've sat through it twice now and keep learning new stuff every time. 
Also, if you just want to download the solution here, you can do that, right? That's just the YouTube library, right? So there's a link somewhere up there, down there, somewhere, I don't know. Go sign up for the YouTube library, training.powerapps91.com. That's a way to get that stuff. And if you have ideas and suggestions on what I should put in that org chart app that I'm going to build next week, I'm going to start on that like soon. So get those in there. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.